Video game settings can be tempting to turn all on, go all in, and go nuts, but sometimes you can't. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 gaming settings you need to turn off now. Starting off with number 10, it's Auto HDR, which is an awesome feature for the Xbox Series X, and at its best, it can add high dynamic range effects to older games or ones that just don't normally have it. And sometimes it looks as good as native HDR support. Stuff like Evil Within 2 looks really, really good. But for some other games, we've seen some people say that the HDR can look blown out or create some weird effects, like in games like Gears of War 1 Remastered, Fallout 4, or GTA 4. So you're really gonna wanna turn off auto HDR depending on the game, especially if really white whites like hurt your eyes or if you think a game looks too dark thankfully it's pretty simple to do so and you can change the setting on a per game basis so it's not all or nothing to change hdr setting depending on the game go to my games and apps find the game you want to change open the menu then go to manage game and add-ons then compatibility options and you will finally be at the auto hdr setting to turn off or on the auto hdr on the system level i.e for every single game it supports you need to go to tv and display options then video modes. Auto HDR is a great feature and for a machine learning tool it's surprisingly effective for a lot of games but there are some that just do not look that hot with it on so it's nice that Microsoft at least gave it the option of turning it off depending on the game. And number 9 is turning off the trophy videos on the PS5. The standard version of the PS5 only has around 667 gigabytes of free space available, and that's not really a lot considering the file sizes of some of the games that are totally ballooning out of control. Like Black Ops Cold War, which back in July was updated, uh, with everything installed, takes over 220 gigabytes of space. That's one game taking up about one third of your total available system space. Uh, it's all a roundabout way of saying if you want to conserve space, you can save as much as possible possible on the PS5 by turning off the trophy videos. Uh, these little videos are short, only like 14 seconds, but if you're playing in 4K, the file sizes will add up pretty quick. And seriously, how many people actually share these things anyways? Just get rid of them and save the potential space. To turn this whole thing off, just go to settings, then captures and broadcasts, and go down to trophies. That's where you can turn off the save trophy videos option. They also started recording personal bests as well with the new firmware update, so turn that off too. Also, don't don't forget to go into the media gallery and delete all the trophy videos from your hard drive too. Otherwise, they'll just sit there and take up space. I mean, unless you want them, but do you? At number eight, turn off the controller mic on the PS5. As far as we can tell, the controller mic is still on by default on the PS5. And it's, I mean, it's definitely something we're recommending turning off. This thing, so, it caused so much confusion when the PS5 initially launched. And it's still not great, even now. Like, if you have the system, you know exactly what we're talking about. You join an online game and it's filled with people breathing into their mics, having private conversations or having screaming babies in the background. It's really unpleasant and a lot of people aren't even aware that their mics are on. Like, you don't want to be one of these people having your private life broadcast to the world while you're playing, like, Fortnite or whatever. So turn the controller mic off. Making it so it's off by default is pretty easy, too. Just go to settings, sound, and microphone. Change microphone status when logged in from on to mute. You can easily turn it back on if you want by just pressing the microphone button on the controller, but this way you won't have it on without realizing it. And number seven is turn off lower max headphone volume if you're using Bluetooth headphones on the Switch. Very recent option you might want to turn off. The Nintendo Switch just added Bluetooth headphone support, which is pretty great if you prefer to game with headphones on. But depending on what kind of headphones you're using, it's possible the audio will be incredibly quiet, even if you've got the volume cranked all the way. To fix this, you'll have to turn off a kind of obscure setting on the Switch. Uh, go to the settings, obviously, and then go to system and find the lower max headphone option, which is what you want to turn off. Doing that should make your headphones a lot louder. This option is probably meant to compensate for how loud headphones can possibly be, which is, to be fair, not bad. But Bluetooth headphones are less likely to have crazy boosted audio like that, so this little option usually makes things harder on you. It's an easy fix for anyone using this new feature, but it's something most people probably don't realize is a thing.
At number six is the skip the profile selection screen on switch option. Like, you ever find it annoying to select which profile you want to use every single time you start a switch game? Well, some people like it, some people don't, so it's possible to actually turn it off with some caveat. The big one is you can only skip this screen if you only have one profile. If you got more than one profile, it's not going to work, as well as if you only have a guest profile. But for many, many people who own a switch but only use one profile, this can make things a little less annoying annoying if you want to get into a game. Just go to the system settings, then users, that's where you find the option to skip selection screen. You turn that on, you're good to go. It's technically a setting you turn on, but you do it to turn a feature off, so we're going to say that it counts. It's not major or anything either, having to press the button twice to start the game and then select your profile is the worst thing in the world. But again, it mainly applies to people who only have one profile, and there's no reason to go through that every single time you start a game. And number five, you can turn off DVR slash game capture on the Xbox One to improve game performance. Um, mostly going off Reddit comments here, so it's not a surefire thing, but we've seen a lot of people complain that the game capture or DVR is actually lowering a game's performance on the Xbox One and the One X. It's not a thing for Series X, purely an Xbox One problem, but if you're still playing on last gen, and a lot of people are, considering how difficult the next gen consoles are to even get, uh, it is possible to turn off the DVR and game capture and possibly improve performance on some games. We're not saying it's absolutely every game on the system. Problems seem to come from a few specific games like PUBG and Black Ops 4, but turning this off can fix the frame rate a little bit. And the problem doesn't seem to be that people are experiencing slowdown when they're recording footage, just when game capture is on, period. Turning this stuff off is as easy as going to the menu, settings, followed by preferences, scroll down to capture and share, and turn off allow game capture. It's not really an all-encompassing fix or anything, but you start noticing hits in performance in certain games that seem to come out of nowhere, try turning off the DVR. It's a good place to start, at very least. At number four, turn off the annoying bottom text on Nintendo Switch Online games. Uh, another obscure setting for the Nintendo Switch that purists will definitely want to turn off. The Switch Online has a pretty decent collection of classic games these days, but it's pretty annoying that there's this overlay over the games that tell you some pretty basic controller inputs, and it never seems to go away. You want to get rid of these eyesores, you just go into the game menu, and then press left to open up some new options. Scroll down to settings, and at the bottom you'll find the awkwardly named show controls in-game option. Turn that off, it'll make the bottom text disappear. The options you get for the retro game collections on the Switch is pretty pretty limited, and you still can't remove your profile picture from the corner, but at least you can get rid of the big white text crowding the screen. Seems like a minor thing, but seriously, try to play something with that staring at you the entire time. It really does get annoying. At number three, you can actually turn off autoplay videos in the Xbox Store. It's an easy fix for an annoying thing on the Xbox Store. The autoplay videos are just sometimes way too loud. They take up a lot of the screen. It's just a feature a lot of people would prefer to be off by default. Thankfully, you can actually just turn it off. It's pretty easy, too. You just open up the store, press left to get to the menu, scroll down, and you'll find the settings menu. Now you just find autoplay, turn the slider to off, and you put a stop to those annoying autoplay videos. So many storefronts do not give you this option, so most people just assumed it didn't exist. But it is possible on the Xbox, at least. And number two, you can turn off the background music and tones on the PS4 and PS5. Uh, if you've had PS4 for a long time, you probably noticed how incredibly annoying the default menu music can get if you leave it on for a while. Uh, I don't know if what it is really about this music, but it'll drive you nuts if you just leave the PS4 lingering too long. PS5 default menu music isn't quite as bad, at least to me, but I do see the potential to get on the nerves. Other people find the menu sounds a lot worse, so either way, after you get over the novelty of the menu, music it's definitely worth just turning off all this noise altogether and doing it's pretty easy just go into settings sound to screen you can turn off the system music and the key tones for the menu sounds as well the ps5 option is a little more hidden but only a little more it's again under the settings and then sound and then audio output you'll have to scroll down a little bit but this is where home screen music and sound effects options are you turn off one or both depending on how you're feeling and you're good to go
A number one turn off match TV mode on Switch. For whatever reason, the Switch is set to automatically turn the TV on and switch input whenever you turn it on or dock it, which can be pretty annoying depending on your situation. Like, for example, if you want to change the Switch, but someone else is watching TV or playing Xbox or something, screen will automatically switch over to the Nintendo console without warning. If you got the system in sleep mode, it won't do this, but I don't know about you, but I forget to put it in sleep mode about half the time when I put the thing on the dock. So I would run under this problem where I would dock the system and then have to turn off the TV. It's a minor annoyance, but it is annoying. So it's worth turning it off if you run into these same kinds of problems. All you have to do is go into the system settings and TV settings, find match TV mode, turn that off. That's it. That'll stop the switch from automatically turning the system on or swapping screens. Um, of course, it's possible your TV is the one actually causing the problem, not the switch, in which case you'll have to check your TV settings and make sure it doesn't power on when a connected device is turned on. It's not uncommon, so be sure to check both the switch and the TV if it keeps happening. Couple of quick bonus settings for your iPhone. First, in privacy settings, there's a ton of them you want to turn on or off depending on your personal tolerance. You may want to turn them all off if you're paranoid. They're found in settings, privacy, and a few others can be found in settings, system services. Turning off these settings will improve battery life, especially system services that are constantly running the background. Then the other one's the background app refresh. This one, especially if you don't want your phone constantly updating apps in the background, saves battery life to turn this off for apps you don't use all the time. The options found in settings, general, background app refresh. And there's, there's a list of apps there. Turning them off means that the phone will stop downloading updates for them in the background. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks